आखिर कौन नहीं चाहता भारत फिर से डेवलप्ड राष्ट्र बने आखिर कौन नहीं चाहता भारत फिर से अखंड राष्ट्र बने और आखिर कौन नहीं चाहता भारत फिर से विश्व गुरु भारत बने हम सब चाहते हैं हम सब चाहते हैं भारत फिर से सोने की चिड़िया कहलाए हम सब चाहते हैं भारत फिर से एक शिक्षा का केंद्र बने जहाँ पे देश विदेश सारे जगह के लोग पढ़ने के लिए आए करते हम सब चाहते हैं उतने इमोशन और उतने इंटेंसिटी से जितने कि मैं चाहता हूँ आप भी चाहते हैं मगर हमारे पास कोई विजन नहीं है कोई सॉलिड प्लान नहीं है कि कैसे भारत को टू में एक विकसित भारत बनाया जाए मैं कुंदन कुमार विल डिस्कस अबाउट द डिटेल्ड ब्लू प्रिंट अबाउट विकसित भारत टू थाउजेंड फोर्टी सेवन आई हैव द सेवन एस फॉर्मूला बेस्ड ऑन दैट वी कैन मेक श्योरली इंडिया विकसित भारत इन टू थाउजेंड फोर्टी सेवन दिस सेवन एस आर सुरक्षित भारत सशक्त भारत समर्थ भारत शिक्षित भारत स्वस्थ भारत सुसंस्कृत भारत एंड स्वर्णिम भारत अगर हम इन सात फ्रंट पे भारत को डेवलप करें और भारत के लिए काम करना शुरू करें 150 करोड़ पॉपुलेशन विल स्टार्ट टू वर्क टू वर्ड ऑल दीज सेवन फ्रंट्स डे बाई डे नेक्स्ट 22 टू ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर्स श्योरली आई एम मच होपफुल एंड यू आर ऑल्सो मच होपफुल इंडिया विल बिकम डेवलप्ड नेशन इन टू थाउजेंड फोर्टी सेवन वेलकम टू द विकसित वार टू थाउजेंड फोर्टी सेवन एंड दिस एपिसोड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द एनसियंट चाइनीज सिविलाइजेशन यू कैन से just one of the one of the things if we are discussing about viksit war 2047 then how it is related to chinese civilization just i will tell you we are in the process to understand how this modern concept of nation or a state has come like now in this world almost 190 192 nation is there which are almost independent and they are uh, self ruling maybe their systems are different different they are following fewer countries are following presidential democratic system few are following uh, you can say parliamentary demo- democratic system maybe their political systems or other things are different but some commonality is there they are the part of one single world and they are following cert- certain code of conduct for the people for the society and for the other country and which are surrounded for that earlier it was not like that then we are in the process to understand how this concept of modern nation state has come from very ancient civilization to this stage last 6000 6000 years how this has developed from very ancient civilization to big big empire then uh, you can say evolution of islam and arab then uh, you can say rise of the europeans colonization decolonization industrialization and afterwards it is it has gone to the like a separate nation state based on the cultural identity based on the language identity based on the religious identity or based, based on the geographical identity or geographical similarity nation and state has formed to aaj hum log is episode mein samajhne ki koshish karenge ki yellow river civilization or you can say whatever ancient chinese civilization which happened during uh, around 3000 bc how it has affected our our uh, you can say human societies and how it is contributed for the development of the human society then welcome welcome again this uh, episode episode 9 viksit vara 2047 just these few figures may be trigger you why it, uh, why name has come this yellow river because this you can say uh, it will it will drain drain to the sea that is name also yellow yellow sea but uh, that is not name because yellow sea is name because what of the river is yellow due to re- name of the river also it is yellow sea and why it is why it is yellow yellow is his nature because it is very highly silted it will come from very high uh, you can say uh, himalayas from very high level of mountain and it will come to the like a plateau then it will come to the plain area due to very long journey it will be concentration of silt will be very high due to it will come yellow is in nature this you can say different type of uh, religion whatever developed during ancient time just will move will try to understand little better way about this photo or this image just try to understand what it want to say it is just made near to yellow river or we can say in chinese name it is wan hu river wan hu river was the you can say mother of cradle of the civilization which has uh, which has supported the ancient chinese civilization and that point of time it has given like a mother kind of thing and it has supported it has developed nurtured the ancient chinese civilization but afterwards in another perspective at present time also government is spending millions millions billions of rupees 
to just control the yellow river flood because it is so devastating and we too much unpredictable due to it is called sometimes ungovernable or sorrow of the china that is also called same river yellow river or one ho river but once upon a time during ancient time it was the mother river and it has protected it has nurtured it has given the way to develop the ancient chinese civilization multiple name is there one ho one who one he or yellow river cradle of the ancient Chin chinese civilization this image or this this a sculpture will give you the hint about what was the importance of this river during ancient time we'll move a little bit more we'll try to understand few more facts about the yellow river this is one of the longest river second largest chinese river second largest only beyond that only yangtze river is there which are more longer than yellow river and uh, you can say yangtze river uh, again they are having their own peculiarity but in terms of civilization or in terms of length or in terms of you can say changes yellow river is more more uh, more more changeable in multiple times compared to yangtze rivers then it is second largest chinese river almost length is 5000 more than 5000 kilometers and uh, sixth largest in the world also what is which is the largest river in this world nile river sometimes uh, sometimes confusion will be that nile river or amazon river but as per record nile river only few uh, few uh, you can say uh, scientist or uh, geologist are telling ki this uh, uh, amazon river is longest but uh, still it is not proven and nile river is on the record largest river and yangtze river yangtze river is the largest river in the world is an uh, is the nile river and largest river in asia is yangtze river both of the things just to keep in mind largest river nile we already know largest river in asia it is yangtze river and second largest river in china that is yellow river it crosses almost nine provinces nine provinces you cannot imagine how much it will be uh, you can say variation in these all nine provinces if it is crossing like just suppose it is a starting from here and it is just path also you will look this river that is so complicated it will start from the himalaya region first it will run almost 1000 km on the mountain then it will come to the plateau area almost 2000 km it will run to the plateau area then it will come to the plain area and afterwards almost 1000 km it will run on the plain area then it is one of the biggest river and it has uh, and due to this diversity or due to this uh, long movement of the river it will accumulated very high concentration of silt and once it is coming coming toward the plain area then their silt concentration will be so high what will happen the water will become almost mud kind of thing it will not like a water flowing freely it will be like almost mud and due to this silt will be deposited 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 and their base will keep on change and base height once were keep on changing then path of the river or course of the river are so unpredictable and due to that this river is called curse of china because no one can guess next year when rainy season will come this river which path it will flow suddenly it will change to some other path and due to their delta region is so vast no one is able to predict no uh, no scientist or no you can say geologist or who are expert in geography which path it will follow next year or this year due to this is one of the greatest harm or biggest you can say negative side of this river positive side many things are there but this is one of the negative side even i will just give you the data few data in last 100 years when heavy floods has come or unpredictable flood has come and how much damage happened just will move little bit more and we'll try to understand physical features of the yellow river this is divided in three parts it is your upper upper course which are you can say mountain area then middle course it will be plateau area and afterwards this is your plain area when it is entering from plateau to plain almost 1165 km length it will run on the himalaya or you can say very high 15000 feet high and uh, here it will be uh, this uh, it will start from tibet and uh, 2900 km length next will come middle course middle course it will be almost plateau region plateau region it will be high you can say longest running 2900 km length almost 
and height is still very high 1600 feet but compared to upper region it is much low that is 15000 feet 15000 feet is very high how much a speed it was coming you can imagine 15000 feet river if it is coming down to the plane then how much momentum and how much force and how much silt it will bring with us very high erosion this is this plateau area it is there uh, you can say this mountain or this plateau or their soil is very loosely bonded due to erosion are very high once erosion is very high what will happen this river will keep on take everything with them and due to that concentration of silt it will become very high and once it is reaching to the plain it will be very heavily silted and their movement will be slow but unpredictable next is coming your uh, plain area that is your 700 kilometer almost and uh, this your Zhengzhou is uh, your delta region that is uh, uh, you can say totally unpredictable very large area of delta like Ganga Brahmaputra we know Sundarban in, uh, in Bengal area that is also one of one of the big delta region similarly this delta region is much much bigger than compared to if you will see like Indus delta or maybe like uh, Ganga Brahmaputra delta heavily silted this is one of the biggest disadvantage shift scores of river flood and damage thora aur chalenge thora aur samajhne koshish karenge why it is a china soro or ungovernable just look this all images you will try to understand how this can be controlled this high speed and high, how much silted it is very high concentration and you will not believe i will give you some data 34 kg per meter cube and flood water contains 710 kg per meter cube seed means just suppose if water one meter cube volume of water you are taking just if you know little bit science if it is nothing is mixed it is normal water then it will be around 1000 kg but in 1000 kg almost 710 kg are silt only 710 kg means 70 percent it is silted how much heavy and it you can say it is almost kind of mud major flood has come 1887 that was devastating again 1889 then 1921 1933 38 1949 and after 1949 government is putting very huge effort or you can say uh, they have taken consultancy all over the world all the you can say whatever expert in that field and uh, they are trying to trying to control the river but uh, still it is ungovernable due to name is government has given the name this river is ungovernable we are not able to govern it because we are not able to predict very properly how it will take or how it will change the course of their flow major changes happened 1852-64 that time it was a their delta region has spread it very fast 1887 it has that time what happened it is totally shifted their course and afterwards it has merged to the some other river afterward based on the technological support or based on the effort of technology again it has brought to the normal path now just we'll focus a little bit more data 56 cubic kilometer water to sea annually in one year they are just depositing discharging to the ocean or C 56 cubic kilometer 1770 cubic meters per second highest sediments load highest sediment load in the world if you will compare 34 kg per meter you will just go for the next river whatever river is there either you are going for uh, you can say Nile river or other river it will be drastically less it will come in single digit maybe 9 10 or 11 12 this is 34 kg per meter cube I think based on that we can understand why these river are ungovernable and ancient time it was one of the cradle of the civilization region of chinese civilization what was the exact region or what circumstances has given birth to the ancient chinese civilization chinese civilization began around area between the two rivers and uh, china was separate this is the main region china was separated from the indian subcontinent by the himalaya and separated from most of the asia by desert separation results in china developing its own unique culture and sense of identity if somebody is disconnected you somebody has uh, you can say uh, somebody has just uh, moved moved uh, moved you away then two possibility will be there either you will develop a 
सेंस ऑफ आइडेंटिटी एंड यू विल डेवलप एज ए यूनिक वे और मे बी यू विल बिकम ऑब्सोलेट बट चाइना हैज डेवलप्ड इन यूनिक वे एंड देयर सेंस ऑफ आइडेंटिटी विदाउट मच कल्चरल डिफ्यूजन डू टू वट आई वॉज टेलिंग लाइक मेसोपोटामियन इजिप्शन एंड इंडस वैली सिविलाइजेशन दे हैविंग सम कनेक्शन दे हैड वेरी गुड ट्रेड रिलेशन दे हैव मैरिज रिलेशन दे वेर गिविंग वन आइटम टू अदर दे आर टेकिंग फ्रॉम आइटम दे आर एंड दे हैव सम पैटर्न ऑफ डेवलपमेंट विच आर ऑलमोस्ट सिमिलर काइंड पैटर्न ऑफ डेवलपमेंट पैटर्न ऑफ राइटिंग पैटर्न ऑफ इन्वेंशन ऑलमोस्ट यू कैन से मच सिमिलर इवन सोसाइटी पैटर्न दिज ऑल मच सम सिमिलरिटी वॉज देयर बट चाइनीज सिविलाइजेशन दे डोंट हैव एनी कल्चरल डिफ्यूजन because diffusion will only happen if they are meeting with others if root is not there they are not able they are totally disconnected by either himalayas or due to desert they are not aware at all other civilization also there other human being also there that time mobile phone was not there if someone will call from china to britain and they will ask how are you and you are going going to do this or not they were not aware at all and based on the diffusion based on the Al, you can say aloneness or based on the lack of the contact they developed in their own way and still they maintain that uniqueness or still they maintain their own identity a still modern chinese civilization also they maintain their own identity and their language also one of the most difficult language because they were not aware about how this world are going on how people are speaking they developed based on their requirement how much requirement happened they keep on invented the figures and you will not believe almost 2000 alpha different type of figures are there to understand chinese in proper way if you want to learn the chinese if you want to learn the uh, learn uh, the chinese language then minimum you have to minimum 500 to 600 figure you have to identify then only it is not like english only 26 alphabet is there everything you can make from this 26 or it is not like other language this is so difficult but who are expert in china chinese language they know around 2000 different figures which can make the different different tone or different sound different dhwani based on the various combinations then this is unique culture chinese civilization is unique culture and that was the reason it has given the birth of the birth of the new civilization this we can see just these three major dynasty was happened shan dynasty and one of the uh, best ruler was there shanti which like a god their people are still they are following like it is a godfather of god means <laughs> all the you can say uh, just sardar of the god or you can say god of the god like in in hindu we are telling mahadev devo ke dev mahadev similarly shanti is treated as a you can say super god next is coming jo dynasty that is your 10272256 and afterwards has come like it started to disintegrate but it is not disintegrated fully it is disintegrated in five or six varying state that is called varying state and that states were little competitive in nature but due to that, that competitiveness lot of development also happened and that point of time only china has given two separate religion also and afterwards buddhism has gone and finally these three religion are firmly established in china Uh, still china if you will go then these three religion are followed one is tao one is your confucius niche and another is your buddha afterwards just will come to the you can say just uh, later period for a small period of time you can say han dynasty has come but they have not able to rule much time hardly 10 20 years they ruled and afterwards great wall of china has become ready don't think great wall of china has made by any ruler or any one ruler or any one dynasty it is a effort of more than 2000 2500 years yes i am telling you fact it is a consistent effort throughout the chinese civilization during ancient time and after making constant effort of almost 2000 years finally around 200 bc it has become full ready and still it is it is standing with i uh, you can say a uh, good shape and uh you can say this uh, strength uh, still it is good strength just will move little bit more will try to understand only diffusion happen when buddhism has my uh, buddhism has spread it in china that time only indian civilization and chinese civilization mingled to each other 
and due to we can say here just parallel timeline we can say just comparison India and China when it was here in Indus Valley civilization that time there Sang dynasty was ruling and when Vedic period here started there Zhou dynasty was ruling and due to two religion Hinduism has given birth to Buddhism Jainism and Sikhism similarly ancient Chinese civilization also given birth to the Taoism and uh, Confucianism and uh, afterwards in Buddhism has spreaded very fast in China and that was the that point of time that was the third third religious practices in China and afterwards Buddhist has become your second largest largest people which are following in China and modern time you will go then now it is the highest number of people who are following the Buddhism now slowly Confucianism and uh, Taoism is going down because their practices are so complicated normal people are not much comfortable Buddhism are giving a very clear-cut idea and it is uh, although ancient time they are polytheists polytheistic in nature means multiple god they used to follow but once Buddhism is introduced like a you can say monotheistic only Gautam Buddha is there no before no after nothing is there whatever teachings of Gautam Buddha is there that is only religion and that only will be your culture and life life uh, preaches then uh, here you can say few points are there Buddhism mainly was focused on few points like why people are suffering this was one of the main concern or main philosophical uh, point of Buddhism second philosophical point was there what is the what is the right path like sometimes people will be so demotivated correct it will be very low sometimes it will be very high due to buddha is called madhyam mark madhyam mark in sanskrit called you can say hindi madhyam mark or in english it is a middle path middle path means always you follow middle path and they have given ashtang rule art niyam diye buddha ne कि ये आठ नियम फॉलो करो जिंदगी में जिंदगी की सारी समस्याएं खत्म हो जाएगी तो बुद्ध के जो नियम थे वो कहीं ना कहीं हिंदुइज्म से ड्रॉन किए हुए थे लेकिन उसको कॉन्सोलिडेट किया हुआ था हिंदुइज्म में प्रॉब्लम है प्रॉब्लम मैं ये नहीं नेगेटिव नहीं बोल रहा हूँ प्रॉब्लम ये है कि थिंग्स आर नॉट कॉन्सोलिडेटेड इट इज़ सो वाइड डू टू एज ए जनरल पर्सन दे आर नॉट एबल टू कंसीव इट प्रॉपरली दे आर नॉट एबल टू कॉन्सेप्चुलाइज इट प्रॉपरली दे आर नॉट एबल टू डाइजेस्ट इट बिकॉज इट इज सो वाइड and their level of understanding it is so in depth as a common people they are not able to correlate their life with their highest level of highest level of knowledge and understanding that is one of the biggest confusion why hinduism are not becoming a like a their pace of running is not parallel to christianity or islam like islam is islam is running like a 150 km per hour christianity is also running almost 120 km per hour i am not giving data just for a uh, wrong way i am just telling but hinduism is running like a bullock cart it is not running at all because we are so wide we are not left anything why they are able to run fast because they are very lightweight they left everything they picked one point and they are keep on running but hindus they we have taken everything uh, still we are taking uh, still we are assimilating what are the things can we can be consolidated or can be assimilated in hindus as a knowledge as a concept as a human as a human dharma it is uh, still going to assimilate due to we are so bulky we cannot move fast just i am correlating analogically nothing more just we'll move little bit more now we'll just try to understand timeline of chinese civilization timeline almost it depends on books to book like people some people will start 1800 bc some will start 1700 bc that is not much because in history whatever we are following the method of uh, method of time method of chronology how we are deciding the chronology like any of the things happened 5000 years before or maybe 10000 years this is based on the carbon dating method and carbon dating method is based on the radioactivity if you know little bit chemistry radioactivity is based on the half life half life is itself a 100 year 200 years then error of margin here 200 years are normal due to history we should not be very much stick especially for ancient history if it is 1000 bc or it is 1200 bc it is immaterial 100 year 200 years is a normal error of margin like we are taking now uh, like uh, design factor or these all afterwards uh, many of the things we are taking for engineering and these all then their margin will be very small it will be very very less 
tolerance limit will be very very less it will be in millimeter if you are considering in the length but here error of margin will be 200 years minimum if 200 years also you are getting almost correct you can say your idea your uh, studies are very good then here whatever is there 1650 that is sand dynasty earliest chinese river valley civilization near yellow river earliest form of chinese writing they have started many of the development happened during the san dynasty and santi santi was the one of the greatest greatest ruler which was having almost god like authority in china next has come zhou dynasty this uh, once zhou dynasty has come then people started to revolt against them people started to revolt against them because they suppressed the san dynasty and they started to rule then people thinking they are wrong people san dynasty people were good they are our god like people and these people are suppressing them and they are uh, just capturing the power then they found one new concept how to mobilize or how to manipulate the public they told their ruler started to told we have the mandate of heaven can say this is all the uh, technique they used to uh, rule on over the people their ruler started to tell we have the mandate of heaven heaven only has given mandate to us you go and replace the san dynasty and start to rule on the china and slowly slowly people convinced for that and that mandate of heaven has given almost you can say 1000 years of ruling and multiple ruler has come during this zhou dynasty this was also also has given the dynastic cycle and it, that cycle has very long last next has come your warring state warring state are almost you can say 200 250 years here what a different type of states six seven states started to develop and based on the conflict and rival dynasties here finally output final output final output is two religion has come out one is confucianism one is taoism thora aur move karenge now just we'll try to focus on each and each and every dynasty what they have done what was their contribution and what was their social uh you can say uh social order like this is your sang dynasty san dynasty it was the like geographical area is like this almost very big empire king was the supreme that will be always and afterwards nobles people warriors leaders artisans farmers and slaves slaves are always they are bottom most they have to pay heavily to make history as a history we are telling like we are reading now history with a like a, this is history that dynasty was ruling this was the ruler who made that history as a history then these slave people who suffered like anything every civilization every civilization they have taken load on their own 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 uh, you can say own body and own uh, uh, their hand and based on that all king has flourished although they have not done willingly under pressure enslaved san dynasty what happened they have taken around 6 1600 bc ruled china about 700 years took over city 1800 city states afterwards uh, like uh, they divided their government into little bits controlled by loyal governors like they appointed some governors to make uh, you can say rule in little but easy government it was a king ruled religion it was that time not very clear cut religion but what was the king like a, that sanity that was itself a, like a god and society was a, like a royal families was the highest and afterwards i told already farmers and slaves are at the lowest next has come zhou dynasty their area has a little reduced this dynasty compared to san dynasty it is little bit reduced but almost you can say social order and culture was almost same and it has ruled almost 900 years uh, they have uh, very skilled fighters and farmers that was their that was their achievement or that was their skill level due to they are able to replace sand ruler because they were very skilled fighter sand ruler were not very skilled fighter because competition was not there they are only ruler they have not developed themselves for a fighting purpose but zhou ruler 
who uh, who just uh, started to started to suppress the sand ruler they were very good fighter and based on their fighting capacity and weapon advanced weapon they used iron weapons that time sand ruler was not using iron weapons and very sharp tools they are using very sharp edge tool and iron weapons based on that they suppressed and they replaced the sand ruler thora aur chalenge this was the king they started to tell we have the mandate of heaven and you are not you are the common people you should not obstruct me otherwise god will curse you we already have the mandate of heaven these all are the just uh, mythology created and that mythology will give the very firm authority to rule and they wanted to rule very legitimate way where people should not oppose after the jaw over to the sand dynasty they had to get people to accept them as a new kings people were not accepting they claimed that heaven granted the emperors the right to rule based on their ability to govern well and fairly you are not judge you are the people you are the public aap praja ho main raja hu mujhe heaven ka mandate hai main rule karunga aap koi nahi hote ho iske bare mein faisla lene wale faisla lene wale upar hai upar ne mujhe upar wale ne mujhe bheja hai go suppress the sand and rule it the son of heaven gave the right to just ruler the overthrow of a ruler meant what is the meaning of overthrow of ruler like sand dynasty ruler i we have overthrown meaning is very simple what is simple meaning they lost the mandate of heaven because he has no longer worthy of it means once any ruler lost the mandate of heaven then heaven will give mandate to some other capable ruler and previous ruler will lost their rule thora aur chalte aage kaise philosophical development hua aage chal ke aage chal ke is usi ke baad waring state ne china ko thora divide kar diya panch che state mein bahut sare states mein divide kar diya finally it was the you can say like uh, uh, it was a output you can say from last 2000 years it was a like a plant was becoming a strong 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 what was the output output was the two religion like in india like indus valley civilization vedic civilization later vedic civilization magadh rule gupta rule finally what is output hinduism buddhism sikhism jainism this is the output final output final fruits similarly your final fruits was two religion confucianism and taoism here kung fu ju lived 551 to 479 bc it is not religion but ethical code they made some code of conduct due to they succeeded like how Islam is succeeded in medieval medieval time because they made very strict code of conduct you cannot go away from this you cannot break this code of conduct if you are breaking it is a very heavily punishable due to they made some ethical code of morals for individuals societies and government also and based on that they were able to succeed primary goal was order harmony peace and happiness and achieved through education self effort and self reflection their philosophy was good it was not bad due to they have they have emerged as a one of the biggest uh, biggest religion in the world most important principle deal with the ideal standards of conduct that was the parent child you will not believe whatever family structure we have or whatever we are feeling like a it is a like a just uh, natural law like uh, father is loving their son or son or daughter this loving should be natural we are feeling it is a natural love but it is started to come from this parent child kindness in the father and obedient in the son both side son should be obedient to father father should be naturally kind to the son husband wife relation right is behavior in the husband and obedience in the wife but still we are we are the, uh, we are thinking like wife should be obedient but why will not obedient and husband we have if we have it should be very tight for the society point of view or for every point of view that also will not there this is all deviation but it is a started from this point of time elder siblings younger siblings elder friend younger friend ruler and subject all these you can say i will just try to explain in my own words how many type of relations we have relation means it is not like a blood relations different kind of relations maybe different social relation 
different family relation different relation based on their need for survival this is most important most of the relations are based on need of survival all these relations confucianism has defined very well and they made some code of conduct and based on the moral and ethics and they enforce to the society you must follow this as a natural law due to it as emerged as a religion and it has given the concept of yan hi yan e the concept it will tell just i will tell you in my own way of explanation then i think you will able to understand in better way this white and black meaning is just suppose if white you take as a happiness white you take as a happiness or suk duk and black you take as a soro what you have seen here if you have full happiness also some point or some percentage soroness will be there you can't be pure happy if you are too much soro also you cannot be 100% some happiness will be there isliye jab aap bahut khush hote ho to bhi aankhon se aansu nikalte hain jab aap bahut dukhi hote ho fir bhi aankhon se aansu घटना से तो हैप्पीनेस एंसोरोनेस इज हैविंग अ साइक्लिक रिलेशन विथ लाइफ एंड इट विल कीप ऑन चेंज दे हैव गिवन द थ्री ज्वेल्स लाइक कंपैशन मॉडरेशन एंड ह्यूमिलिटी इट विल रिफ्लेक्ट इट विल जस्ट लाइक अ डे एंड नाइट लाइक अ सीजन विल सीजन विल चेंज एंड आफ्टरवर्ड्स ह्यूमन रिलेशन लाइक ये इट इज गिवन द सी हियर स्प्रिंग एंड समर मेल एंड फीमेल पॉजिटिव चार्ज आफ्टरवर्ड्स लाइट एंड डार्क moon and afterwards bright everything whatever you can say opposite in nature that is defined in the form of yan e yan e in the in the way we can say like a shiva and parvati due to ardha narishwar roop of shiva and parvati is the another representation of yan e thoda aur aage chalte hain thoda aur samajhne ki koshish karte hain ki isne lao lao ne lao ne kya kaha tha this laosu laosu was the one of the famous developed taoism and uh, just i will share my one of the small experience very long back maybe i was in 11th or 12th only that time by chance i got one book that book heading was the taoism of physics the taoism of physics us samay mere palle nahi pad raha tha kuch kyunki usme mujhe taoism ke bare mein utna nahi pata tha aur actually us samay 11th 12th mein log apne career math science mein busy rahe but by chance because from uh, you can say very early age i was interested to gain diverse diverse kind of knowledge some point of time i was little free just i was turning the pages and in that pages one figure i have seen and that figure has attracted attracted me and afterwards that book i read multiple times still i am not able to grasp fully it is so complicated book if you also will get time you can go to. the taoism physics is that figure was related to like it was explaining about the shiva tandava ki if shiv is doing the dance if any common person also will do exact in same way then pralaya will come and it is explained based on because it was uh, it was relating their religion to the physics and math then it was very much explained how much best they can based on their mathemat mathematics and physics theory and they told everything it is analyzed what is the angle of their leg what is the angle of their head and in how much bit rhythm they shiva was doing tandav everything was explained i cannot say in 2 3 minutes it will be very difficult for me but based on their mathematical analysis they concluded if any of the people can able to do same kind of dance then pralaya will come but it is almost impossible for a simple people for general people or as a sadharan manav ki us precision ke sath dance kar paaye us precision ko achieve karna god ke bas ki baat hai hamare bas ki baat hai theek hai aage badhte hain inhone kya bola tha about the time it is almost matching with like buddhism concept due to buddhism was more popular in china it is a uh, this concept we will do like a Laosu Laosu was one of the greatest philosopher in uh, Taoism he has told if you are depressed you are living in past 
if you are an xgs you are living in future but you are at peace you living in present what you want you live you want to live in present past or future choice is yours and after us next phase around 200 bc has come when introduction of buddhism has come to the china and still you will find big big statues or big big sculptures of buddhas all over the china or you can say not only china other other uh, asian country also like japan korea everywhere they used to follow buddhism just will move little bit more how chinese civilization contributed or how they have done the advancement to the society one advancement was their farming they used to produce millet wheat barley and rice S silk was one of the biggest invention of the chinese they only invented the silk silk bombs dogs pigs sheep they had a complete metal uh, metal workers and craftsmen and afterward they started to make different kind of tools sharp tools military developed bronze body armors and powerful bows and uh, chariots war chariots afterwards astrologers created a calendar based on the cycle of moon this was a common calendar is developed by every civilization because that was the compulsion ah one of the interesting thing this is uh, still met with this company name also is heard oracles correct now this is your chinese writing system more than 2000 symbols are there to express word and ideas that time priest used to write your questions whatever you want to know about the future or what is your point of uh, uh, you can say query they used to write on the bones and seals and heated them up till they cracked and then read the predictions based on the pattern of the crack this was a unique practice they only can the legend of silks this silk has come from how it has come just a, it was a incident one 14 years old queen of china supposedly saw a worm spin its cocoon she then took the cocoon and dropped it in hot water and was and watched it break up to the threads the thread was the used to sew and create silk garments and from that point of time silk has started and afterwards all over world started to use the silk religion it was polytheistic top god was santi i already told the founder of the san dynasty ancestor worship still india we are following it has taken from china maybe ancestor worship or maybe chinese has taken from indian we don't know because indus valley civilization uh, it was not there but uh, vedic civilization was there ancestor worship began in this period as did the sacrifices to the gods when kings died thousands of slaves were executed to serve him in the afterlife this all the wrong practice one king has died after war thousands of slaves were executed when after life king will be needed then these will be served the king's tomb would be filled with objects and food that he would need in after life like egyptian like egyptian egyptian like they made pyramid and in pyramid they used to keep all the things whatever they needed day to day and similarly their king tomb used to keep all the things whatever can be needed afterwards around 200 bc the great wall of china it is one of the greatest achievement and it has taken almost you can now just see that much long time it was a continuous effort it was a continuous effort by many dynasties and many of the ruler then this marvelous work has become ready and that is still standing alone with great power and you can say strength due to great wall of china we can say ancient chinese chinese civilization is ending here and from this point of time we are and we are entered in medieval china or modern china i think just lump sum idea we got about the ancient chinese civilization and our purpose is also for that only we are not i am not taking you as a history special class for any competitive exam or anything we are just taking you to get the idea how this human civilization has traveled in last 6000 years and reached to this modern concept of mission and state thank you thank you very much